What is the definition of Lord? What do we confess when we say Jesus is Lord? We will get to these and more questions in today's confirmation video, so stick around. Welcome back, confirmands. As always, you will need to have with you your catechism and Bible and a pen to take some notes. Now, in our previous video, we started talking about the second person of the Trinity, Jesus, and how he is both true God, who can save us completely from our sins, and true man, able to completely understand us and to keep the law perfectly on our behalf. And because he is true God and true man, he is our Lord. And that's what we're going to talk about in this video. But let's begin with our most important lesson, that we remember that we are baptized and beloved children of God, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So first of all, what exactly is a Lord? One division, the definition of Lord is this, someone or something having power, authority, or influence, a master or a ruler. We sometimes use it as a verb, too. We say, to lord over something, and that means that you act in a, a superior or a domineering manner towards someone. So when we say Jesus is Lord, which happened to be one of the earliest creeds in the church, question tells 148 tells us what we confess when we say this. Take a look at question 148. It says, when we confess Jesus as Lord, we confess that Jesus is truly God. That's the first thing. Two, we also confess that through Jesus, everything was created, and because all things were created through him. The third thing is this. We confess that he rules over all things. Now, I hope you take time to go through those Bible verses, because there's some really important ones there. But one more thing that this little phrase, Jesus is Lord, tells us, as we'll discuss in our later videos, is that because of his authority, we are to serve him and him alone. Jesus is our Lord because he created us in all things. It's his right to rule over us, yet his rule and his reign look very different than our human rulers and authorities. There's a great passage in Mark chapter 10 verses 42 to 45 that describes these differences, so let's read it together. Mark chapter 10. And Jesus called his disciples to him and said, You know that those who are considered rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. But it shall not be so among you. But whoever must be great among you must be your servant, and whoever would be first among you must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. You know, human rulers and authorities rule by force, but Jesus rules by love. Human rulers govern out of power and sometimes fear, but Jesus governs out of service. Human rulers often want to be served, but Jesus wants to serve rather than to be served. And Jesus wants us to do the same. True power, true authority, true lordship is not through power, Jesus says, but through love. Take a look at question 149 back in your catechism, because it tells us the extent of Jesus' love and his lordship over us through this love. Take a look. Question 149. Why do I confess that Jesus Christ is my Lord? Because Jesus has given me eternal life and has taken me under his eternal care and protection. That's pretty awesome. You know, in our previous video, we asked the question that Jesus asked his disciples, and he continues to ask us today, who do you say that I am? Well, hopefully we can answer with these words from Martin Luther. I believe that Jesus Christ, true God and also true man, is my Lord. And I hope that we can confess that he leads us and governs us as our Lord through love. 
And we'll talk about that more next time, that love that he governs us with. So let's close with our blessing. May the almighty and merciful God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us now and forever. Amen. We'll see you soon, guys.